You'd already given up on the hope when they finally found you. You were starving, you were broken, but worst of all, you were delirious. Spending nearly a week alone in the woods with gapping wounds, thinking you were going to die, it changed your entire mental state. You were passed out when someone finally found you. They shook you awake and you realized it was Mondelay standing over you. Hello? She asked in a soft voice as she shook your shoulder gently. Hello? She immediately called for backup and within the hour, you were being shipped off to the nearest hospital. You wouldn't lay down on the bed though. You stayed curled up in a ball, eyes wide and looking at your surrounding. You were so sure you were going to die out there. You accepted days ago. After the villain attacked and nobody came for you, in the beginning, you were sure that your boyfriend Itoshi would hunt you down. But he never showed. Neither him, nor any of your friends or even teachers showed up to rescue you. You were rushed into the emergency room immediately upon arriving to the hospital. You were pushed on a gurney into the hospital where a group of doctors and nurses were waiting for you. One of them reached to wrap a blood pressure cuff around your arm, but you smacked it away in a panic. Everything was happening so quickly. Nobody would give you a minute to think. Your heart beat rich in your chest as you tried to fight off the hearts of nurses and doctors trying to hook you up to several machines. Listen. Said Mandalay, who had accompanied you to the hospital. You need to let them help you. You hurt. You'd stopped feeling the pain days ago. You just shook your head as you examined your body, covered in dirty burns and dry blood from wounds that were way too deep. You brought your leg back up to your chest as you were brought into a room and returned to your fetal position as you swat away another doctor. Two nurses stood on the hither side of you, reaching to grab you by the elbow. We need to move you to the bed, one of them said. You just shook your head violently. Listen, you need to let them help you, Mandalay repeated. She held out her hand to you. Just lay down on the bed, okay? You turned to look at her, eyes wide. You'd spent the last few days in almost complete darkness so your eyes were still adjusting to the light. You were about to react when you felt something stick into your arm and turned to see a doctor pushing on the plunger on the serang. I'm sorry, Mrs. We need to sedate you. You've given us no choice. You tried to push away the nurses as they tried again to pick you up, but you were already feeling weaker. Your white eyes were already drifting shut slowly when you felt yourself lift off the gurney and land on the bed. You tried your hardest to keep fighting them off, but it was no use. You were unconscious in seconds. When you woke up, you felt a pain like no other. You could feel the burn on your skin and the medicine the doctor had put on it. You could feel every single stab wound and the stitches that held them closed. You could feel the emptiness of your stomach. You pulled your leg up to your chest, wrapping your arms around them to hold yourself in a ball. You winced from the pain, looking down at the stab wound covering your legs. You'd stopped feeling your wounds days ago. But now that your nervous system was somewhat back on track, they burned like wildfire. Your eyes were wide as your mind raced. The last thing you remember was the doctor drugging you to sleep. As your eyes drift around the room, you noticed a purple-haired boy sitting in a chair. Your heart raced as you realized that it was your boyfriend. He thought she was there. But he hadn't come for you. It always promised you that it'd help you to keep you safe, 
But when you really need him, he left you all alone. Your days in the hoods began hopeful. You knew he was trained to protect others and that he'd come for you when the fight was done. But as the day passed, you lost hope. You bared your teeth and growled, snaring at him as his eyes opened. That was how you fended off predators in the hoods. He let out a loud sigh as soon as his eyes were settled on you. I'm so glad you're okay. He said as he stood from his chair. He walked over to your bed and crouched down beside it. I thought you were gone or kidnapped. Nobody seen you in days. He reached to hold your hand, but you slapped his arm away aggressively. His eyes filled with hurt as he looked up at you, and you noticed the bags under his eyes were heavier than usual, but you were sure they were nothing compared to yours. You wanted him to go away. You spent days waiting for him to find you, but he never came. He just went back to school without knowing what happened to you, without looking for you. He just abandoned you out there. And now that he was finally there, now that he had finally found you, you wanted him to leave you alone. What happened to you? He asked quietly. When you slapped his hand away from yours, He figured it was probably something wrong with your hand, and instead, he went to lay his hand atop your bare foot. It wasn't ideal, but it was something. But when you kicked your foot up to push his hand away, that broken look in his eyes shattered even more. Please. He quietly begged that his eyes met yours. Please don't do this to me. Don't shut me out. You bared your feet and growled again. It had worked on the animal in the forest. Why wasn't it working on him? Why wouldn't he get the message and just leave you alone? Please, talk to me so I can help you. Help you? He wanted to help you. If he wanted to help, he would have found you when you were dying in the hoods. He wouldn't have just given up on you. If he wanted to help, he would have helped. You turn your head away from him, hoping to give him the message without speaking. You hadn't said a word in days. He sighed again, but in disappointment this time. Listen, I don't know what you went through out there, but I'm willing to give you all the time you need. I just need you to show me a sign. You rolled your eyes. A sign of what? Was he looking for a sign that you still loved him? That you worshipped him as a savior for being there only after you need him? Did he want a sign that nothing has changed inside of you? Did he want a sign that you were going to be flocking in a patch of flour within the next couple of days and pretend that it never happened? You lick your lips as you place your forehead against your wrist. You open your mouth, but hesitate. Why should you bother speaking to him? Why should you bother speaking at all? What was even the point? Nobody had heard you when you need them. Why would they hear you now? But it was the fastest way to relay the message. Go. Your voice was hoarse and your throat burned, but you got the words out. Just one more. Away. Your eyes squeezed shut. The burning cessation in your throat only adding to the agony you felt through your entire body. It was silent for a moment, and you thought he'd listened to you and left. You slowly lift your face from your arms, but were disappointed to see him still crouching beside you with tears streaming down his cheeks. He was just staring at you, not saying anything. You had to try again. This time, You filled your mouth with your own saliva and swallowed it in an attempt to moisten your throat a bit. You promised. You croaked out. His gaze didn't waver from you, not even for a second, and you continued. You promised. And you lied. A fresh tear cascaded down his face as he said, Listen, I try to look for you. You shook your head. 
he didn't believe them. If they'd been looking, it wouldn't have taken so many days to find you. They'd left you out there to die and rot. I just thought you were dead and just go, you said, effectively cutting me off. You looked directly into his deep purple eyes, then flicked your gaze to the floor. His gaze shattered one final time as he got the message and slowly stood up to approach the door. His heart hurt, but he knew there was nothing he could do. He'd lost you to the madness. Oh, oh, oh.